Good morning and welcome to the Daily Tanya. Today is Monday, the 21st day of Tammuz. And uh, sitting here in beautiful Pomona, New York. A place like this is a nice place to sleep and relax from time to time. It gives you time, you can reflect, you can start think, to think, and make things clear. And actually this is connected with uh, the Tanya show, what we're going to learn today. Let's begin with the tzedakah. The doyla tzedakah, shema kareva zagaula. Here's a pushka for the chede chabad in Mansi. So, this, uh, we're all in the middle of chapter 7 in Egeo Satshuva. The part of the Tanya that the Tzedakah talks about repentance. And we spoke the last few days how the Alter Rebbe leads us step by step to be able to reach a deeper, uh, a deeper level of repentance, and that is through understanding and appreciating what who we are, the neshama that we have, and what is the effect that we have both in a positive way and in the negative way. In a positive way, you have an ashama that every time you do a mitzvah, you're doing follow God's instructions and brings light to the entire world. But yet on the other end, when a person goes against Hashem's will, he's using that same power, this godly neshama that you have, and you drag it down into the lowest places and the forces of the evil that I've explained, they nourish from that fact. So we need to clarify. The is going to speak today about giving yourself time to think over deeply, to be a, a master of accounting of the effect of what your action really does. But at the same time, we have to make sure that this should not affect, should not in, neg- in a negative way. God forbid if a person is thinking about uh, the bad things what he did or the terrible consequences, he can either get the person depressed or he can become careless. Okay, that's it. I'm bad. Too bad. Nothing I can help. I'm going to do what I want anyway. And both things is not good. It's not healthy. So, basically, the, even the Alter Rebbe said that this is only very specific times. It's important to know. It's important to have the information, to know, to understand, and to, to know the truth, to know who we are, what is the effect of our neshama. And But in the same time, it is important to focus, especially today, on what it says: "If do is Hashem b'simcha, serve Hashem with joy." The service of God, the service of God, must be with joy, and the joy is the fact that Hashem takes us back, no matter what, no matter how far, how low we fell, we fell. Hashem takes us back. Tshuva always helps. We can always bring ourselves up, and on the contrary. Person who fell fell low has even a greater power to come back, and that is what the focus should be. But it's important to know the other side as well. To know the effect, what it's done when a person doesn't follow Hashem's ways. So let's see inside what the Alter Rebbe says today. Yesterday we spoke about the, the, the offering of Hashem, the sacrifice that we, we give to Hashem is a Ruach Nishbara, the broken heart. Says the Alter Rebbe, how do you get there? How is the heart to be broken and humbled? Says the Alter Rebbe, back in the days, King David 
He used to fast, literally. Deprive himself from physical food in order to be able to focus on his spiritual self. And this is how he eliminated his evil inclination. Mm -hmm. um, this is not advisable today. Although in the time of the Alter Rebbe, he says a tiny bit of that is advisable. To have fast and to have mortifications that uh, people were, they used to roll themselves in snow or go in places with ants that should uh, and lots of creatures to bite them, all kind of things like that to, to crush the, 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 the physical body. But the Rebbe says, I already said in the previous chapter, that today we don't do it. Even, to, even the Rebbe said, today we don't do it. But even the Alter Rebbe says, Only a very minor part of this can be accomplished through mortifications and fasts. Why only a little bit? Because today we're not capable of, of, of having this and, and it shouldn't affect the other areas. Just like when you take uh, uh, sometimes a medication, an antibiotic, uh, who is killing the unhealthy cells, but if it's too strong, if you don't have the power, to, to it, can, it can kill you. So today, if we're going to focus on these things, it's going to eliminate our ability to serve Hashem. These generations of ours, when we have not the strength to fast as much as did King David. As our sages comment on the verse uttered by King David, he said, and my heart is slain within me. And I will say this comment on this, they say, for he had destroyed his evil inclination by fasting. So that, says the Alter Rebbe, a tiny bit of that can be done. What is the main thing? The main focus should be, the main focus is, should, is to humble your heart and to have a real accounting and to think of the effects of the acts, what we do and what we don't do. And to understand what is accomplished, what is what what is the effect of the actions, how we take and drag down the godly energy and our neshama, and instead of being, everything should go. Uh, to go, the energy to go to the right places, it goes to the wrong places. We give our energy, this godly soul, to the forces of evil. But the true humbling of the heart so that it be broken and crushed. And so that the spirit of impurity in the Sitra Acha will be removed. This is achieved through being a master of accounting with, with all the profundity of one's mind, with the depth of the mind. To really think about it deeply. It says, what is a master of accounting? A master of accounting is, is like a person who take, takes a stock making. And it's, it's, there is a difference between uh, an, an accountant that is hired by a company to take accounting or the boss himself who takes his accounting. He really cares for it. So when you take an accounting, sometimes you can have something that uh, that really shakes your to the core. When you see something terrible, big happened, they say, wait a second, I have to change the whole way in, in a business, for example, say I have to change the business. But sometimes there's little things here and there that you don't pay attention. But if you sit down and you think back, all of the little mistakes that you made throughout the year, and you see how much money that you lost there, you just realize, wait a second, I'm going to go broke. I'm going to go bankrupt. So that when you sit down and make an honest accounting, you can look at things in the right way. So the same thing here, Dr. Rebbe says, you have to be honest with yourself. Basically, you look yourself in the mirror and say to yourself, what I did, is this the right thing? Did I speak to my wife in the right way? I act with, in the business rightfully. And then there's small things. They speak rightly. All these things you take into account. It says, One should 
concentrated his intellect and understanding deeply for a period every day or at night before Tikkun Chatzas. And again, here it says every day, but today maybe it can be once a week, once a month, depending. It says, Lisbonin be Mashapoal, but also Bachatov, Bechinas Golos Ashkina Kereskalein. To contemplate how through his sins he has brought about the exile of the divine presence that we spoke yesterday, as noted above, that the divine presence is in exile because a Jew is connected with the source of his neshama. Wherever you go, you drag the soul and the or the and the root of the soul, which is the divine presence, in the same place. And what happened, and it caused his spirit and divine soul to be uprooted from the divine source of all life. And what did he do with the Yenoshama? He gave it to the, to, to the evil, to the impurity. And demeaned it to a place of defilement and death, namely the chambers of Sitra Acha, chambers of the other side. And it's called the place of death because anything which is not all holy is considered dead, as we shall soon see. Now his soul is becoming a vehicle for them. Instead of you becoming a vehicle for Hashem, the soul becomes a vehicle for them. What is what is the concept of a vehicle? A vehicle serves its rider wherever he wants to go. So you're getting your neshama to serve the evil, the other side. The kabel mehem, and then what happens once you draw your neshama down to down to this lowest levels of the evil, then you receive your energy from those dead places, from the places of evil, which is called dead. The Kabelmen, Shefa Vechayus Lashpiel Gufi Kaniskalael, receiving from them vitality to endow his body, as noted above. And the nature and the life force of the sinner emanates from the Klippis and Sitra Acha. As Dalterebbe, this is why our sages say that the wicked people they are considered dead while they are alive. Why? Because their life comes from the places which is opposite of life, opposite of God, which is the places of death. Thus our sages declare, they declare that the wicked, while alive, literally meaning in their life, they are called dead. Kaloima, which means this means to say that their life is derived from the sight of death and impurity, from the chambers of the Klippis and Sitra Acha, as opposed to holiness, while uh, which is true life. The same thing says the Alter Rabbi. When our sages, when the, the verse says in Tehillim, I say, Lo amesim yahalaluka. That the dead cannot praise Hashem. Sounds like you're mocking the dead people. Oh, you're dead, you cannot praise Hashem. This is something which is forbidden in the Torah. You're not allowed to mock people, dead people. In fact, there is a, there's a law that it says when you walk into a cemetery, you're not allowed to show your tzitzis, the fringes, which is a mitzvah to wear. You have to tuck in the tzitzis when you walk in a cemetery. Why? Because if you if you let him hang outside, it's like you're mocking the dead and saying, hey, look, I can do a mitzvah, you can't. So you're not allowed to mock the dead people. So why does the verse say in the, in the psalm, it says that the, pray, the dead cannot praise Hashem? You're not supposed to mock the people? It says the Alter Rebbe, we're not talking about the dead people. We're talking about the living people, living dead people, the wicked people. And we say, you cannot praise them. You cannot praise God. Why? Because when you praise God, the evil thoughts that you're receiving from the dead places interrupt you and you cannot have the proper praise of Hashem. Are you allowed to mock living people? Also not. But here it's not about mocking. It's about putting them in the right place and about getting them to do teshuva.
That's what Alter Rebbe continues. V'chein ma shekosov lo yamesu mi yahal lo yamesu mi yahalu lo vagayma. Accordingly, the verse that says the dead will not praise. Einu ikeloyeg lo rosh chaz v'shalom. This is no mockery of the impoverished. God forbid, for it does not refer to those who are physically dead. Ela kavana al rishayim shebechayim ko mesim. Rather, the reference is to the wicked while alive are called dead. And being, being spiritually dead, they are unable to praise Hashem. Why not? Because when you get your life from the other side, the thoughts can be confused. They, you get thoughts from other places, even dreams. People sometimes dream all kind of weird dreams. They come from the being involved in the evil places. For they are confused with alien thoughts, while yet in their wickedness, and do not desire repentance, as is known. While in such states, the evil person will find it well, well nigh impossible to praise God fittingly, because of the of the confusing alien thoughts which are thrust upon him. Thus, he says, an individual will become contrite of heart when he contemplates how his soul has been uprooted from its source because of his sin incurring excision or death by divine agency such thoughts causes the person really to go the neshama to go into such low places and again I need to conclude again to remind that, that yes it is very very important to know the facts to know the truth, to know that this is it, this is the real truth. And at the same time, what is the focus of what we should do? Maybe from time to time to focus on this truth, but the main focus needs to be that we woke up this morning. Hashem gave us the neshama. We say, Thank you, Hashem, for giving me back my neshama because with this neshama that I have today, I can change everything around. One mitzvah. Is near mitzvah v'teira oyer. Mitzvah is like a candle, brings light into the darkness. So, should be a wonderful, wonderful day, and we shall see you, Bezat Hashem, tomorrow.